this video is on proteins. We will start by looking at the monomers that make up proteins, known as amino acids. So I'll start by drawing the structure of an amino acid. So all amino acids will have this group here, which is known as a carboxyl group. It's a C double bonded to an oxygen and then single bonded to an OH. They will also have this group here, NH2, which is known as an amine group. They also have this hydrogen here bonded to the carbon and then they will have this R group, which is basically a variable side chain. This is the thing that makes all the amino acids different. There are 20 naturally occurring amino acids, and amino acids are amphoteric, which means they have acidic and basic properties, so can act as buffers in solution. When two or more amino acids join together, they will form a special type of bond known as a peptide bond. So when you have two amino acids joining together, you get a dipeptide. And when you have more than two amino acids joining together, you get a polypeptide. The amino acids join together in a condensation reaction where water is lost. I will draw the condensation reaction between two amino acids to form a dipeptide. This H and this OH come off to form that molecule of water. And therefore, the peptide bond forms here between the carbon and the nitrogen. The opposite to this reaction is a hydrolysis reaction. So this is where a molecule of water could be inserted here into the peptide bond to break this dipeptide into the two amino acids again. There are four different structures of protein. There's primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. First, we will look at primary structure. You may see it written as this. So primary structure is the sequence and the number of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. That's what primary structure is. You can have hundreds of different amino acids in a polypeptide sequence, and this means that there is almost limitless number of possible combinations and therefore types of protein. Now we will look at secondary structure. You may see it written as this. All proteins will have secondary structure, like all proteins will have primary structure. Secondary structure is basically where the chains fold into two different regular shapes, known as alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. Hydrogen bonds hold these structures in place. Alpha helices are more common than beta pleated sheets, but proteins can have both of these within their chain. And it results in the R group sticking out to the side, ready to bond, forming the tertiary structure. Tertiary structure is further folding of the polypeptide chain caused by bonding between the R groups. and this forms specific 3D shapes. Not all proteins will have tertiary structure, only some. The types of bonds in tertiary structure are hydrogen bonds, which are numerous but weak, ionic bonds, which are stronger and vulnerable to changes in pH and temperature, and then you have disulfide bridges, which are very strong covalent bonds, 
These only occur whenever two molecules of the amino acid cysteine come close together because you've got sulfur in this side chain of cysteine and therefore those sulfur atoms will bond. Remember, ionic bonds are attractions between negative and positive charges on the different parts of the molecule. Now we have got core tertiary structure. This is basically where several different polypeptide chains are held together by bonds. The bonds are similar to these ones in tertiary structure. Not all proteins will have quaternary structure. An example of a protein with quaternary structure is haemoglobin. The BioRep test can be used to test for proteins. What you need to do is you place your sample of the solution to be tested in a test tube and add an equal volume of BioRep reagent. Then you just need to observe the colour change. If protein is present, then the solution will change from blue to purple or lilac. The colours are quite pale though, so you need to look carefully. Lastly, we will look at the two main types of protein. You have globular and fibrous. Now, fibrous proteins usually contain regular repetitive polypeptide sequences. Whereas globular, it's not so regular and repetitive. Fibrous proteins have structural functions, whereas globular proteins have metabolic functions. Globular proteins are spherical in shape, as their name suggests. Globular proteins are soluble, whereas fibrous proteins are insoluble. An example of fibrous protein is keratin which is found in hair and nails. Examples of globular proteins include enzymes and haemoglobin. Now pause the video and have a go at these questions. So question one, draw the structure of an amino acid. So you have the central carbon bonded to a hydrogen, then you've got this carboxyl group, you've got the amine group, and then you've got this variable side chain represented by R. Question two, how many amino acids are there? There are 20 naturally occurring amino acids. Question three, what type of bond joins two amino acids together? That is a peptide bond. Question four, what is primary structure? It is the sequence and the number of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. Question five, what are the two different 3D structures that form part of secondary structure? It's alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. Six, which bonds hold tertiary structure in place? You've got hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, and disulfide bridges. Question seven, give an example of a protein with quaternary structure. A good example is haemoglobin. Eight, which levels of structure do all proteins have? Primary and secondary. Not all proteins will have tertiary or quaternary structure. Question nine, what is the colour change in the BioRep test? It is blue to lilac. And question 10, what is the function of fibrous proteins? So they have structural functions, which is different from globular proteins, which have metabolic functions. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful.